Hey, it's the footy coach here. Everton are in serious trouble. What was once one of England's great clubs, have not won a trophy since 1995. Current owner has run them into the ground close to administration. They're building a stadium whose cost has increased multiple times. Premier League has hit them with the points deduction with another possibility to come. And worst of all, there's a vulture circling the carcass attempting to take over. Who is that? You may ask. 777 Partners. They may seem like a shining angel ready to rescue Everton from their financial woes, but there's a lot underneath that veil that once uncovered paints a shocking situation though at this moment the Premier League have not approved any takeover. We could go through all the details of Farhad Moshiri and his insipid leadership of the club backed by lackeys such as the now departed Bill Kenwright, rest in peace, who I should state absolutely loved Everton but that's for another video. So who are 777 Partners? According to their website and the ramblings of their CEO and various media interviews, 777 is a family of passionate sports fans with high energy and teamwork deep rooted in our culture. We bring together deep sector knowledge, underwriting, expertise and the depth of vision revolutionize how clubs, leagues and sports organizations are managed on a global scale. They apparently excel at identifying potential where others do not. Uh, one of our defining traits, we uncover unique opportunities to help under valued teams transform from clubs into highly profitable media and entertainment properties. They are a Miami based firm and Fahad Moshiri has agreed to sell his 94.1% shareholding to them. As he stated, I have spoken to a number of parties and considered some strong potential opportunities. However, it is through my lengthy discussions with 777 that I believe they are the best partners to take our club forward with all the benefits of their multi-club investment model. In the last two years, 777 have acquired Sevilla in La Liga, Januar in Serie A, Standard Liège in Belgium, Vasco da Gama in Brazil, Hertha Berlin in Germany, Red Star FC in France and Melbourne Victory in Australia. This seems like an impressive collection of clubs. However, recent investigating has unearthed a financial maze within 777 partners and their holdings. These clubs all seem to be a part of that. Everton could be joining them. At each of these clubs, there's been fan protests against the ownership. Vasco fans, for example, released a statement on Twitter against 777's ownership. Basically says they were promised funds, the coach was promised money for signings, and they've had nothing. 777 owns a 70% holding in Vasco, which apparently was valued at $350 million. Seems unusually high for a Brazilian club. Vasco finished 15th in the Brazilian league last season after flirting with relegation all season. They signed 20 million euros worth of players and sold players for 30 million euros, including two of their best prospects, notably Marlon Gomez to Shakhtar. At Sevilla, they own a 15% stake but have been at war with the president Castro so they don't have much influence. Sevilla not having a great season, they're struggling in 15th place. Over at Genoa, there's been this unbelievable situation going on which hasn't affected them on the field. They're sitting mid-table but off the field, it's been a minefield for Italian authorities. When 777 took over, they bought 99.99% of the shares from this fella, Enrico Prezioni. He did get relegated in 777's first season, made their way back. But last year in February, the club was docked a point for failing to pay taxes and tax contributions from the previous year. 777 did the plea bargain which reduced the punishment to that one point and showed there were sufficient funds to cover the outstanding payment. Put it down to an administrative error. However, things seem to have not really gone to plan. In September of last year, Josimar Football, I highly recommend you check them out for their incredible investigative journalism, reported Genoa still owe 106 million euros to tax authorities and that they face bankruptcy as other creditors owed 160 million euros. Previous year they had tried to offload the debt from the club to a small image rights subsidiary of the club which was rejected by the Italian Football Federation. The CEO got fined 6,000 euros for this. There's a lot more craziness going on there. I recommend you read Josimar's investigation on that. Now another 777 club there's more alarm bells ringing. Standard Liège the fans have been protesting for a long time against 777. Even their chief executive has been at a loss to explain what's been happening which is worrying when he supposed to be running the club. People have doubts about 777 and sometimes I have them too but I am not here to be the lawyer of 777. I cannot endorse everything. The management is primarily responsible for the sporting situation with this poor ranking and this insufficient dynamic. We are working to make the club stronger. Standard have had financial issues throughout their ownership. They were hit with a transfer embargo just last month for failing to pay transfer fees due to Valeringa and Union Saint-Gilois. Standard Liège also reported a record loss in January of 
20.3 million euros, which was reported by Belgium's National Bank. The debts also increased to 24 million euros, this despite 777 promising to reduce the debts when taking over. According to a leading sports economist in Belgium, Standard have the worst financial situation in their league. All the indicators are in red. They owe 3 million to Marwan Fellaini. Yep, that Fellaini. 777 need to find 40 million to pay off creditors by the end of the current tax year. They've still not actually paid the previous owner, Bruno Venazzi, for their takeover. He's due a second payment by the end of April. Failure to do that will mean ownership of the club would revert back to him. When Standard was sold, it was reported as being for 55 million euros. With the Vasco deal, this seems way overpriced and recently it was revealed the sale was nowhere near that. Similar has been reported with the purchase of Red Star FC, with documents proving that the purchase price was nowhere near what was being told to the media. Over at Hertha Berlin, there was a court case in London that revealed the former owner had yet to be paid for the takeover. The actual deal was for less than 15 million euros. There's a lot to unpack there too. As you can see, across all of these clubs, the serious questions to be answered about the financial situations of these clubs. Now I just want to say that debt is not a bad thing in business. Debt, if acquired correctly, can enable a business to invest, to address cash flow, and most of the largest businesses have debt. What is important about that debt is the interest being paid, the length that it's been taken for, and of course how those repayments will be made and whether you've got the income to make those repayments. I won't go into that and there's plenty on the internet that you can read about that. Moving on to Everton, some of the fans have been proactive in understanding 777 and the Everton Fan Board Advisory did release a statement through the FSA asking these questions. However, I've seen a lot of fans wanting them to take over, which I find absolutely wild. There's a lot of information that comes out recently that shows 777 are in a lot of trouble as well as Everton themselves. As far as we know, 777 have been actually funding Everton's operating costs. They've loaned around 200 million just so that Everton can stay solvent. It shows the absolute dire straits the club has been put into by Fahad Mashiri. This loan is basically paying players and staff's wages under the costs. But what do 777 gain from buying a distressed asset like Everton? We have to delve further into this organization and how they get their funding because this firm was created in 2015. What else do they hold apart from the football clubs? And there's also this mystery of ACAP. The New York Times has claimed that most of the funding for 777 partners comes from loans totaling around $1 billion from ACAP and its related firms. And also that since 777 was founded, they've been regularly missing payments to businesses, vendors, partners, which of course we have evidence for with the transactions in the clubs that I've mentioned before in this video. On top of the football clubs it owns, they also own a budget airline, Flair Airlines, which recently had multiple planes seized due to missed payments, a reoccurring theme we see. They own a couple of basketball teams in London for which they've also failed to fund the employees' pension contributions. And there was even a late payment on the stake they bought in the entire league. Another company that 777 own is 777 Re, a reinsurance business in Bermuda. This has been placed in administrative control because the monetary authority in Bermuda suspects several financial breaches. Semaphore.com has done numerous investigations on 777RE. Again, I highly recommend reading their website links in the description. They found that over one and a half billion dollars of customer cash was used to invest in European football clubs, the budget Canadian airline, and a wide range of risky investments. When as a reinsurance company, this is supposed to be invested conservatively so that future insurance claims can be paid off. This means that customers' fortunes are now tied to a relegated French soccer team and possibly Everton. 777RE got downgraded by a credit rating agency due to these investments and 777's CFO recently resigned. Staff have not been paid on time. It all seems to show an organization operating beyond what it can afford. They've been touting numerous businesses for sale. It seems to overcome these cash flow issues. Some of their businesses have had to borrow money at interest rates as high as 52% to stay afloat. On to ACAP, controlled by Kenneth King, a man who runs various insurance firms. He's apparently used various vehicles to fund 777's rapid expansion. He sold policies to 777RE, covered payroll for 777 on at least one occasion, and there's a web of links here which various journalists have reported on. It's a minefield really. Could say more about this on this video, but this isn't meant to be a finance video. 
So why Everton? Premier League, of course, is the biggest revenue generating football league in the world. 777's entire strategy to stay solvent, it seems, is reliant on acquiring Everton. Buying Everton, of course, that brand new stadium in Toll would increase the value of the company, which would create more liquidity and allow them to raise capital via investors. There's an estimation they'd need to sell equity, possibly up to half, just to cover their current financing issues across their businesses. Everton's finances are absolutely obliterated. They already owe 100 137 million to US investment group MSP which has to be paid off straight away there's a change of ownership that money was used for the new stadium the implication here of course is that 777 and ACAP will use that stadium bill once completed to borrow against so they can raise capital but at the moment more money is needed to build the stadium and ACAP have said in a document that they'll be willing to underwrite the construction of that and get a loan so there's the kicker they want that stadium they can mortgage that stadium and raise capital to cover their shortfalls elsewhere i.e the stadium is more valuable than the club they won't need to invest in transfers if the club's relegated they'll still own that stadium which today is costing over 700 million and continues to rise all of their current football businesses lose around 200 million euros a year that in itself is without everton a club which is making huge losses so this should be a huge concern to all everton fans and the premier league this is the play that i believe 777 are after to cover their losses elsewhere they want to take take over Everton and they want that brand new stadium. They have no interest in the club. They have no interest in where the club places. They have probably no interest in what goes on on the pitch. And this is something that seems to be repeated at all of their other football clubs. I've added links to investigations being conducted by sports and financial journalists in the description. Please do check those out. I hope for Everton's sake that this financial black hole they found themselves in can be resolved, but whether this takeover goes ahead or not, it's looking ominous, unfortunately. If you enjoyed this video, Please do like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching. Hey there, buddy. Come on over. Got a story about the game that you should know. I've seen it all. I've been around. Gonna break it down. So listen close. The footy coach gonna show you how it's done. From the clubs to the managers, we've won. Yeah.